My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is part four, I think, for the um, uh, fluid dynamics videos that I'm doing. So, in this episode we are looking at the Venturi effect, and this is important generally because of carburation. <coughs> so, the way this works is you have a restriction, so you have a uh, nominal cross-section, then you have a restriction, then you go back to that nominal cross-section. And the way it works is that as your flow enters the Venturi, um, we have a divergent nozzle, and then we expand outwards to a diffuser. And your flow, in a sense, looks like this. So what happens at the centre of this restriction, and this is well overkill, they're usually not this big, but what happens at the centre of this restriction is that the air is the flow, should I say, the charge, the flow is compressed, um, which means that its pressure drops, it, there's a pressure increase here slightly, and then you have acceleration. So your flow speed speeds up here, and then when it gets back out here to the diffuser section of it, it expands, slows down, and returns back to normal. So P1 here, uh, P2 here, and P3. So let's just say P1 is 14 psi. Depending on the restriction, this could drop to just say generally 10 psi, and then it should return back to 14 psi back here. And, you know, the units don't really matter, you can use pascals or bar or whatever you want to do. But this is uh, back to the restriction video I did where we talk about nozzles and diffusers and all the rest of it. So why would we want to do this? Well, we want to do this with carbs, uh, the carburation. And the reason why is if you just have a carb that has a straight through cross section, so the uh, cross-sectional area here, one, and cross-sectional area here, number two, uh, CA1 and CA2 are equal. So if we just have flow going across here, then nothing changes, and we just have just basically normal flow. But we want to put fuel into the system, we want to add fuel um, to this flow. And the way you can do that, or should I say, the reason why, if you just basically try and add fuel to this, if we had a little opening here, and fuel trickled down in drops, it would literally just fall through the entire fluid. You'd probably actually end up falling over here because obviously there's a flow going through. And then you just pull fuel here and then you just have to wait for evaporation. Now that is an issue because we have flow going through this um, pipe at quite fast speeds. And this will actually cool um, this pipe, your, you know, your very basic carburetor, basically your, your, your pipe. Uh, the flow would actually cool that, it would take energy from that until equilibrium is reached. So your fuel will basically just sit down here and do nothing. So what we can do, and we'll get rid of that again, is that why is that fuel not, you know, evaporating and mixing? Well, one, there's the temperature, you know, we're cooling it down and all the rest of it. The other thing is as well is the actual pressure of the air. The pressure of the air is restricting... Um, not yeah, it's basically denying the uh, fuel to basically add to that system. Because we have a pressure across here, and just so this is 14.7 psi, and then you try and add fuel to that, you're trying to basically add more molecules in, it will resist that, and it will keep the fuel as a liquid. So what we need to do is we need to work out some way of reducing the pressure. If we can create a low pressure region inside this pipe, then we can add fuel to that. So that's exactly what we do. We have an opening, we restrict this pipe like so. We add a restrictor in there. And what happens now is our P1, P2 and P3 
is that we have a lower pressure region here because we're restricting the flow, which means it accelerates. When gases accelerate, their pressure drops. So we've got a pressure drop, basically a low pressure region in here. And then what we can do is we can add fuel in there. So as the flow comes in, this is a you know, atmospheric pressure, just say, when it comes to here, it drops down like I showed you with the pressure values to about 10 psi, something like that, and then back to 14. And what we do is, is then we have a fuel bowl sat down here with a jet going into the fuel. And because of uh, Bernoulli's principle, the fuel will sit here. But now there's a pressure drop, which means that the air acting upon air pressure acting upon the fuel here in the fuel bowl, this is why you have to have a vent in your fuel bowl, the pressure, if this was just straight, there'd be 14.7 psi pushing on the fuel and there'd be 14.7 uh, 14 psi pushing down here. But the problem is, well, the good thing is, is because we've accelerated the flow and caused the pressure to drop, this just says 14.7, this is 14.7, and then this will be 10. And because there's a pressure difference, fuel then works its way up into here and it evaporates into a vapor into the floor. Now, what happens here is that as it tries to turn back, as it tries to return back to normal, the fuel doesn't just fall back out of the floor because it's now pressurized. This is now returned to normal pressure and that in a sense holds it, it suspends the molecules. So if we were just to look at these molecules and we were to take a strip, a strip there, a strip there, and a strip there, we find a different coloured pen. Um, found the pen. <laughs> so let's just say we have our air molecules, and I'm not going to do all the molecules, but we have one, two, three, four, five. We'll just go with five. And we have this spacing, and this is how they repel each other. This is the pressure there. As they come into here, obviously you're trying to squeeze five into here, so that's not what happens. It shits maybe two out. So we'll have one, two, three, like so. And then the other two get popped out like that. So that's what causes your acceleration. This is a really dumbed-down version of thinking about it. But that's, in a sense, what happens. One, they have to lead in front. So because we have this... Um, there is space, um, there is space near the pressure has dropped and the force of the uh, atmospheric pressure applied to this and the force of these molecules isn't enough so the fuel is added, so we'll put two fuel in there and then when we get back down to here and everything slows down again we'll have our four, we'll have four molecules because we have our fuel ones in here as well. So you will have the same reading of your 14.7 psi, just say if it is atmospheric, but now you have fuel suspended in basically in your flow, so that's what we call a charge. You now have um, vaporized fuel molecules that are suspended in the air. And obviously this then makes its way into the engine and then we can combust it and so on and so forth. So one of the important things we have to consider here is how do we meter this? And the main, the first way we meter this is by having a restrictor here. Which will have a mass flow rate, as in, because this is such a small hole, only so much fuel can get through that hole per second. And these are your jets, so if you increase your cylinder size then you'll need more fuel, so you'll need to increase your jet size for the same car. Um, so that's basically your jets are, they are just restrictors that restrict the flow rate of the fuel um, entering the, uh, the car body itself. So there's not much to that really, it's just the basic principle. It was, uh, oh, what's his name, Giovetti. Giovetti Venturi, I can't reason it is Batista, that was it. So it's Giovanni Batista Venturi was the guy, the physicist who worked all this out. And um, I will, I one day I will make uh, just basically a little um, clear uh, perspex model that I can actually show you how it works. You can see the pressure difference. Um, but yeah, that's basically the the, the um, 
how the Venturi system works, how the Venturi effect happens, and I uh, hope that makes sense. We'll see you in a bit.